If you're one of the 90% of tractor owners that don't have a third function on your machine, I'm gonna tell you how to get the cheapest one on the market, save 5% and what you wanna use it for. Stay tuned. Most folks are gonna pay 20, 30, or 40 grand for their new tractor or even a used tractor. But would you pay just 2% more to have a lot more versatility and capability? A lot of folks don't really even think they need that third function, that additional capability. A lot of you guys think it might be for a grapple, and yeah, that's probably the most popular reason you would get a third function. But I've got a list of 15 attachments that are gonna require an additional function beyond what's standard on these tractors. So it could be something you need, you just don't know it yet. Do me a big favor, hit that like button if you like the video, hit that subscribe button if you want more videos like this one, and read through that description below. A lot of helpful links down there for tractor owners. Quick recap on what a third function is, or it could be a diverter kit, but it's gonna be an extra set of hydraulics. So you already have two sets right here. Two hoses makes one function, so you have one function, two function, you don't have a third on most of your tractors. Look for an extra set of couplers up front, could have an extra set right here in the middle, or they could also be located on the back of the tractor. One quick note, if you have what's called Power Beyond, it's gonna be something that might look like this on the back of your tractor. There's no actual lever or button anywhere else to control the circuit. That's something different. You're gonna to have to add in a control valve of some kind. This is what would run a backhoe or some other attachment that has its own levers and controls on it already. Now the difference really quick between a diverter kit and a true third function Diverter kits are going to divert the flow. So if your flow is normally going in this direction, you push a button, as long as you're holding that button in most cases, it'll redirect it through a valve system here over to this additional circuit to perhaps instead of uh, raise or lower your front end loader or curl or roll a bucket, instead you can reroute it to open and close the jaws of the grapple. That's a diverter. Now on a true third function, you don't have to divert the flow. You can still raise and lower or curl and roll and open and close the jaws at the same time. So this is gonna be a more expensive route to go. Yes, it is the most ideal, but it's a trade-off that you have to decide. Now let's get to those attachments. What you see here is a grapple sized appropriately for a small tractor. There's a whole video all about the grapples and selecting the right one for you, but this is a very common reason you wanna get a third function. See these hoses coming up? They're tied into that diverter kit, that third function capability to be able to open and close this top jaw. If you don't have that third function capability, you can't open and close the jaws of the grapple. You could go the electric grapple route or even get a brush crusher if you wanna avoid the cost altogether. Only you can decide that. Now this is not an exhaustive list of attachments that require a third function, so if you know of another one that I haven't mentioned here, leave a comment down below and help us all out. A popular use for a third function could be a top kit or a tilt kit. Now if you had a third and a fourth function, you could use a top and a tilt kit. But this is going to be a hydraulic cylinder to allow you to angle whatever is attached to your three-point hitch forward or back. Or you could have it on the side cylinder here as well, and you could angle it side to side, maybe for a grading blade, for example. Let's talk about snow blowers now. Let's say you have one mounted on the back of your tractor, you got your loader on, tying up the first two um, SCVs or the, the first two functions, so you need a third function to be able to hydraulically rotate your chute. Now you can do that manually, but that can get old. And if you have a cab, that's a real pain in the butt. You're gonna see here, I've actually got one, two, three hydraulic functions on here. So that would mean I need three additional circuits to be able to run everything that I have. Fortunately, I do have that on my tractor, but you can see how these circuits start to add up very quickly. That can really drive up the cost of some of these attachments, as well as the setup for your tractor. So typically, most tractors are going to have a hydraulic chute rotation to be able to direct which way you want the snow to be um, discharged, but this is also going to have a hydraulic deflector to make it shoot up or shoot out further. And then I have something called a hydraulic back drag that uh, if I wanna go back to a building and drop that down and then pull the snow forward away from there, I can do that as well. All with the push of a button or movement of a lever without ever leaving your seat. What you have right here is a loader mounted snow plow. Now all of these come into me as a manual setup and for good reason because again, we talked about 90% of tractors don't have those additional hydraulics. But you can add on a hydraulic kit to make this hydraulically angle instead of having to get off the tractor seat, come out front, pull some pins, rotate the angle this way or that way and kind of manually do it. it. Takes a lot more time, it gets cumbersome, especially when it's cold and it's dark and you just don't want to be out there doing it any longer than you have to. So yet another reason to think about getting a third function for your tractor. 
Okay, so we have a flail mower right here. They make these in a manual offset. They also make them in a hydraulic. You're gonna see this is actually a version that requires two additional hydraulic functions because you can hydraulically angle it this way or that way and hydraulically offset it this way or that way as well. So you can see how these functions start to just really accumulate, but this is a great type of mower for ditch banks, for fields. It can be used in place of a brush hog or even for some folks are gonna use it in place of a finish mower. So it's a very versatile piece of equipment, but you can see the bigger they get, the heavier they are. So do you really want to be manhandling, you know, a, a six or seven foot flail mower like this and trying to manually offset and get that pinhole locked back in place? To do it hydraulically will sure require a whole lot less effort. So if you're ordering a tractor new, it might be a good idea for you to add on at least one additional function, if not a third, fourth, and fifth function. You can already see we're only a third of the way through the list, the different applications you can use those additional hydraulics for. If you have a used tractor, doesn't have the additional hydraulics, Summit Hydraulics is the place to go. You get 5% off with code GWT, a lot of DIY solutions that are gonna save you a lot of money. You can tackle this yourself. So it doesn't matter the brand of your tractor, John Deere, Kubota, Mahindra, Coyote, the list goes on. Hydraulics are hydraulics. You can get a diverter kit. That's typically gonna be the cheapest route. You can get something to run up front, something to the back. You can get a true third function. You can even get something called a hydraulic multiplier, which turns turns that one additional function into three, four, five, or six additional functions. So there's a lot of ways to go about it, but I suggest you talk to them because they'll know what you need for your tractor. And again, don't forget code GWT to get 5% off your order. This is called a four in one bucket. You're gonna see there's a hydraulic cylinder on either end. You got the hoses in the middle. You gotta hook it up to a third function in order to operate it. Four in one buckets are pretty sweet. You can use them like a traditional bucket, like what you see here. You can also open up that bottom and then clamp against things if you wanna uh, capture material, almost kind of like a grapple. You can also open that up if you have a bucket full of, say, gravel that you want to uh, overlay on your driveway or whatever else. You can just kind of let it slowly spill out as you're driving along. A really good way to get a controlled dispersion. Something I want you to keep in mind is I sell all these attachments that you see that we're talking about as well. Some of them will be made to order. Some of them I'll have in stock or maybe stored at a distributor, but so kind of plan ahead if you can do that and get your order in early. Head to GoodWorksTractors.com to get more information. Let's talk about blades. You have a rear blade, you have a box blade. These are both gonna be a manual setup right here. You're gonna have to manually angle this blade left or right. The shanks, the teeth that are on here are not gonna be um, hydraulically adjustable. However, you can get the hydraulic versions of it if you want. So you can get a very heavy duty version that would have hydraulic shanks on there or even the ability to adjust the angle. Same thing with the rear blade. If you wanna hydraulically angle it right or left, you can do so. They're gonna make versions of this blade that hydraulically move. You just need to have the ability to do it with your tractor. So there's always a trade-off. The hydraulic options are going to cost you more money. However, that is going to save you time as an operator or if you simply don't have the strength or the desire to manhandle these attachments and make the adjustments yourself or you're just to the point where you want to get it done as fast as you can on the weekend, that's where the hydraulic versions come in handy. Now we are taking a look at one of my least favorite attachments on the planet, the three-point post hole digger. So what you see here is going to be totally manual, totally non-hydraulic, except for the three-point hydraulics on your tractor and the PTO um, turning that auger there and, and digging down into the earth. But what you can get is a version that mounts to your bucket. It'll attached right to the side of your bucket. You need additional hydraulics to run up there to the gearbox and drive it, spinning that auger, but that gives you an option up front, a little bit handier way to go about it. Um, you can actually use your your tractor hydraulics then to put some downforce as well as you are augering. So I've never used one of those hydraulic bucket mounted post hole diggers, but I know they make them for compact tractors and I can get them through one of the manufacturers that I represent. These attachments are just a pain in the butt to work with. They're a pain to mount, they're a pain to store, they're a pain to use because when you're going down, traditionally you don't have any hydraulic force to push it down and make it go further. So you're relying on the auger bit itself, pulling it down into the ground. You don't want it to go too fast. You got to maintain control of it. They get stuck a lot as well. So they're just a pain in the butt to use. Anything you can do to make it easier on you is going to be a big win. On the other hand, I get it. If you've got 600 post holes to dig, it sure beats doing this by hand. And I want to let you know, you can get a version of the traditional post hole digger for a subcompact like what you see here with shorter augers as well, just sized accordingly, or you can get the larger version for your two, three, and four series tractors as well. 
So if you want to go the traditional route of the three-point mounted post hole digger, there is a way to get that down pressure called a down pressure kit. And that is something you'll see a lot of post hole diggers have an option of coming with. When I was doing some research for this video, I learned something new all about the 4066R, my own personal tractor, is that there was a factory option to add on a hydraulic down pressure kit with the three point. That would be a really cool option to have. What you can use a down pressure kit for besides a post hole digger could be something like grading. You know, if you have a box blade or the rear blade and you want to get more pressure as you're, as you're scraping the surface. If you are core aerating your yard, for example, and you want to get those plugs down as far as they can go. Anything you want to apply more force besides just the weight of the attachment, that's where a down pressure kit will come in handy. Now for you smaller tractor owners, there are going to be manual stump grinders where there's no additional hydraulics required. You simply hook it up to your three-point hitch, attach the PTO shaft, and grind away. However, once you start to get to larger tractors that have more capability on them, hydraulic options are going to come into play. And what those hydraulic options mainly do is allow you to slide that grinder left or right. So instead of having to go constantly forwards and backwards with your tractor, you can leave your tractor stationary for more of the time, allowing you to grind a stump left to right more efficiently. One thing I'm really excited about getting for myself is going to be a set of hydraulic forks. So most forks are going to have to manually slide along the rail. For my shop out here though, we are moving all sorts of pallets and equipment all the time. So having the ability to not get out of the operator station and just hit a button and have those forks widen or narrow up is going to really save a lot of time and make us a lot more efficient. But as the theme of this video goes, you need the additional hydraulic function in order to do that. Now a lot of your smaller brush hogs or rotary cutters, choppers, they're called a lot of things, are going to be manual operation, right? You just raise and lower your three-point hitch, you plug them into the PTO. Once you get the bigger pull-behind mowers, it could be a batwing mower, you're going to have additional functions that are going to be required to raise and lower those wings, or if it's a pull type, to raise and lower the wheels to pull those things along. So you got to think about that ahead of time. A lot of these machines, larger compacts, for example, are not going to be equipped with those hydraulics you need. So think about it ahead of time. A good way to get the capability is to add on one of those hydraulic multipliers. And don't forget, 5% off with code GWT at Summit Hydraulics on all those multipliers. Now for all you tree guys, whether you want to plant trees or pull them right out, if you want to run a tree spade, you're going to need additional hydraulics. If you want to have a tree puller to pull them out, you got to have additional hydraulics. So either way you go about it, get yourself some additional hydraulics to get those tree projects done. All right, so I'm sure I left some items off the list there, but that's a pretty good idea to let you know the versatility of a third function or a diverter kit. So again, you get 5% off with code GWT at Summit Hydraulics. If you think of something else or you know of another attachment, leave a comment down below. If you found this video to be helpful, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button to get more tractor videos and read through that description right down under the video all sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners like you. Thanks so much for taking the time to stop by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.